Hello, hello, hello. I uh, have successfully ended all of my technical problems, and well, that's that's gonna that's gonna be hubris when something inevitably goes wrong later. But um, I've solved the problem I was having, and I'm pretty much ready to start. And sorry for making you all wait. So, um, I'm going to assume that my uh, my audio is fine and just dive straight into the game. So we can pick up wherever the hell it was we left off, which I believe was preparing to go fight one of my favourite bosses in the game, Ornstein and Smau. Or Smo, or Smoch, or Smoo, I believe. I've heard a Smoo occasionally. He is what you would call a smooth operator. I'm going to become human to make sure that I can get an assistant, because it's incredibly useful as a sorcerer. I say this every time we fight a boss, but it's incredibly useful to have someone else to tank for you. Um, including if it's another sorcerer, because, you know, if they're killing you, them, they're not killing you, which means that you can blast away with Great Soul Arrow, whatever the fuck you have. <laughs> so is there no way to smooth it all over? This is my preferred route for the corpse run for this particular boss. I don't know why. I find it less frustrating to fight the uh, brass guardians than to fight the silver knights, but I might start coming from the other, the other bonfire because the other bonfire has the advantage of being kind of the hub players tend to leave their summon signs at for this boss. A lot of um, a lot of the different bosses. Some bosses are more. Um, more popular as essentially farming locations than others, because the, ma the main benefit, the main reason... Yeah, it does have that weird kind of appeal. Oh look, I've missed an item, I'll have to go grab that before we go do anything else. Actually, that's a thought. I must not forget to invade the world of an utter bastard and kill him for retributive reasons, which is really how we all should behave at all times in the world. Let's see if I can peek up here and get this guy. <laughs> so, um, this is what I always used to do whenever I had to fight these guys for the corpse run. I would carefully shoot them from outside their aggro radius until they died, which takes ages, so I'm not going to do it because it's bad radio. Um, but I just wanted to show you that it's possible. The angle of the stairs is, exa is exactly right that you can get away with that. Ow. Hmm. I'm reluctant to use my more expensive soul arrows just because, you know, I've got to go fight the boss. Or, well, no, I've got to go fight a tough NPC and then I'll probably go rest and then fight the boss, but still. Not so tough. Yeah, well, he's going to get Lot wrecked shortly. If you will. I can understand why you would not, but if you will. Really risky doing that. <laughs> it's useful to be inside his shield, but the uh, extremely long animation time for spells and um, the fact that you can't dodge cancel out of a spell means that um, they will crush you if you're not careful. Are you telling me that you think Laurentius is a cool guy and he doesn't afraid of anything? Can I get this guy with a... No, I don't have the good ones anymore. Well, wouldn't you? It's the entire projected force of my consciousness. I don't think anyone would like to have that slam in at crotch level. Oh yeah, these guys have a swing. They're such a pain to kill. You don't need to fight them every time you fight the boss, but it... Yowza. Okay, that must actually be the upgraded version. I thought that um, Unrelenting Force did not actually do damage. I thought it just did not back. So it's worth being more cautious when you're fighting these ones and just um, basing out that shield slam and then shooting them a couple times. You know, slow and steady wins the race, by which I mean shoots them in the balls sufficiently. Not that they have balls, probably, considering that they're illusions. The question is, does Gwendolyn bother 
to simulate the entire giant body inside the armor or only the armor itself. It's reasonable to assume that when Anor Londo was full of people, this was actually... Oh, dodge timing. That was nice. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that these were actually giant guards. But they are not currently. They're just... Angry clouds? What's an illusion made of? It's just it's all just light bouncing around. It's photons. It's photons, baby. Man, these guys are tough. That should be the end of them. Ah, yeah. Wrath of the Gods. Not unrelenting force. Hmm. 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 I've already used a bunch of my Estus. So, with luck, we can get a decent player to come help us. Uh, I'm going to just use the item now and have done with it. Let's see if we can go fight some guys. So, this is the, this is an, this is the item dropped on the body of the murdered Firekeeper. Now that we've found where he is in the world, we can transfer to his instance of reality. And uh, go kill him. Punitively. Because the killing of a... Uh, Firekeeper is a kind of an existential sin, and as such, we need to deal with these guys. It's a very easy cheese strategy. You can you can shoot these guys with arrows from outside of their aggro range, uh, as you can see. Um, so that's far enough that it doesn't do any damage, but if you shoot him with poison arrows, he'll still take poison damage, and if you build it up, you can uh, essentially just poison him to death. I think these two... No, hang on. I'm completely wrong about that, so don't quote me on whatever it was going to be that I was going to say. So the advantage here, or the, what we need to do here, is essentially go guns blazing, all power, as fast as possible to kill some of these guys. Uh, not least because one of them is also a sorcerer, and uh, as we've seen, sorcerers have the real damage output. So if we don't want to die horribly from sorcerer spells, we need to be careful that he doesn't hit us. As you can see, that's a fuck ton of damage. So this fight can take a couple tries. Um, I don't believe it's possible to get people to come here and help you. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? Welcome to the assassination. It's worth making sure... I think that if you kill Lautrec, the other guys despawn. So it's worth actually making sure you kill the others before you kill him, just to get a bit of bonus experience. Which shouldn't be too difficult, unless he keeps dodging. There we go. Lotrex kind of bastard us in many different ways, as we've seen. It's very funny to me that he sort of will stand there and ah yeah. See, I told I told you previously. Once we get Soul Arrow, we can just kill stuff in one hit. It's difficult to land it. I think he has. I think the sorcerer has a knife. I think he tried to hit me with a knife, <laughs> which is also kind of funny. Like, look out! He's got a knife. Uh, I cast kidney laceration oh that oh he had the firekeeper soul okay so i could have actually upgraded my estus flask i'm a fool are they different or does it just count as two? Oh god which one is the important one soul of the ash maiden soul of a long lost firekeeper okay so this one the ash maiden soul it's very important and must not lose that <laughs> um because having rescued her soul from this um just vast dickhead. Uh, we can actually bring her back to life, which isn't not not necessarily a good thing for her. That's that's up to the philosophers to decide. But it's definitely a good thing for us because it will restore the Firelink Shrine bonfire, which we can use later. It kind of it's Firelink's kind of the the shield boss of this. It's the it's the complicated point at which. Okay, well now you're just trying to upset me. Lord Shrek has done many things wrong. Um, what the hell was I saying? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, but if you restore her soul to her body, she comes back to life, which is a pretty neat trick. I mean, I can do that, technically, but I don't know if you can. It takes quite a while to learn how to do it. Also, this is one of the few times in the game where there is an invisible wall. You can't uh, step through into this weird Archimedean screw-based lift.
Well, Trek's whole deal is that he's a weird, enigmatic guy who sometimes helps people and sometimes kills people, but um, can and will do enigmatic murders and seems to have a thing about murdering firekeepers specifically. So, you know, um, I mean, the universe seems to consider it a cosmic crime because otherwise there wouldn't be a black eye orb for you to be summoned in with. Now what I'm going to do is, where's my bottomless box? Did I never buy the bottomless box? So the bottomless box is an item you can get from, uh, I think, the first merchant in the game. And he um, allows you to... Uh, if you buy it, you can store stuff in it. But as you can see, I do not have a bottomless box. And no, I'm not going to stop saying the phrase bottomless box. Um, my feelings on how the series wrapped up are kind of complicated. I have this personal feeling that the Dark Souls series, or the Souls series in general, was always sort of intended to be a bit more like um, Final Fantasy, where it's not the same place, it's different ideas being explored, you know, thematically related ideas being explored in different ways, in different settings, with different sets of characters. Um, so I felt like Dark Souls 2 should really have been called Dragon Souls, because dragons are very important and their whole deal is important to what that game is, exactly the same way that the Dark Soul is important to Dark Souls 1, and that the Demon Souls are important to Demon Souls. So, um, yeah, but Dark Souls was far more popular than Demon Souls. And um, then when Dark Souls 2 came out, people did the thing I always criticise people for doing, which is to... Um, get really, really, really obsessed with obtaining this imagined platonic truth of whatever a narrative was existing in some higher dimension. There's this belief people have that the imagined worlds in fiction sort of exist in some higher plane and the, the authors are merely pulling them into reality. Um, and that every detail must have been thought of and everything must connect to something else and everything must have a literal true explanation at its core, which is just fundamentally poor, um, fundamentally poor media literacy, if you ask me. I think that people should have the understanding that sometimes things are metaphors, and sometimes things are my minor details that don't need to be explored, and sometimes uh, various other things with regards to that. So, my personal theory is that when Dark Souls 2 came out and was very different and shared similar themes and vague implications of some recurring characters, maybe. Um, and then the entire fan community went nuts for figuring out exactly who was who and what was where, and really making some spectacular reaches in order to do so. Um, no, no, no shade on anyone. Um, they went, oh, okay, that's what people want. People want it all to be explained and connected, ultimately. I guess our intent of creating a story which existed to be interpreted by each individual in their own unique way was a mistake. And then they made Dark Souls 3 that explains how a bunch of things work and ties a bunch of things together and expands on the sort of uh, the metaphysics of the setting. And um, so despite, despite how I've just made it sound, I do like Dark Souls 3 a lot. I've enjoyed it a lot. As I've said before, I've only played Dark Souls 2 once, even though I actually think it's a good game. Um, but Dark Souls 3 I have played through f four or five times, as opposed to like the ten or so times I've played through Dark Souls 1. Man, I'm bad at fighting this guy. Um, so, yeah. Given that, I think that the ending they have given us is good. I think that it's a good game, and I think that if you are going to expand on the metaphysics, then the way in which they do it is, is all well and good and fine. Um... But I'd rather they just continued the um, the Final Fantasy style thing of just jumping around to different places, completely, you know, different universes, completely unconnected, but sharing similar, different discussions of different themes, but that are sort of vaguely related. Yeah, exactly. Like, why is he hurt, bro? Come on. Anyway, so this guy should come help me fight the boss now. Um, I'm gonna let him take lead on 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 these. Oh, we might just sprint past them all. Nope, looks like we're gonna fight. Yowza, that was a ton of damage. What the hell? That pyromancy did way more than my um than my soul arrows do. Fuck me. 
Buddy, can I... Am I... Did I hitch my horse to the wrong, uh... To the wrong wagon? Should I have been a pyromancer this whole time? Did I get seduced by the... The intellectual pull of... Of pyromancy? Uh, of, of sorcery when I should have been... Going for the more natural... Deeper art of pyromancy? Well, he seems to have won that fight handily. So, um, Soler's summon sign is around here somewhere to summon him and help you with the fight, and that was a lot of sibilance in that sentence. I say, not stopping. Yeah, that's a good point. By the way, uh, oh boy, I should be looking at the game in the fight, not the chat. So, um, the thing about, what the fuck was I saying? Um, well, I did actually say in my very first stream that when I do bosses and things, I was going to be in focus mode and not, uh, you know. Well, I just wasted all of my fucking soul arrows, but that's fine. Soul spears, rather. <laughs> Cutscene dodge. Nice. So my stream manager app on my phone has cleverly decided to stop working, so I have no idea what anyone's saying. Um, but what I was going to say previously was that, um, in response to what Rathorius asked, there actually is uh, an interview with the, uh, the game's director where he said that the goal with Dark Souls was to, um, like there was no story bible, there was no carefully planned out um, Tolkien-esque, every detail of the world is carefully implemented and thought through um, platonic truth to be found. Um, they wrote a whole bunch of different weird evocative things with the intent that people would come up with their own connections and their own interpretations and figure, figure their own answers to the questions of existence and what things are and what they mean and why they are where they are and how they work. Um, so it seems like it was a game intended to cultivate the kinds of ways I feel about these kinds of narratives, but instead uh, people people got way into it as a kind of like figure out what really happened kind of story. I can now see the chat again it looks like. I guess it just reset for some reason. So before we move on I'm just going to point out a little thing that everybody knows about Dark Souls. The various children of Gwyn and various other relatives of Gwyn are, of course, members of this pantheon of deities. So we have Gwyn, god of the sun, god of light, the chief god. Here in, in, in the centre, Pride of Place, we have his daughter, Guinevere, who I believe is the goddess of love, maybe? Um, and here we have an empty plinth. So the generally understood theory of who occupied that plinth uh, and this is actually supported by the, the information you can find in the game, is that it would have been Gwyn's eldest son, um, who was the god of war and who committed some kind of unspecified sin, which was so severe that he was revoked of his deity status by Gwyn, which is interesting that that's something he could do. And also, uh, you know, all images of him were to be destroyed and removed. So there's all these empty plinths where, where that was supposed to be. When Dark Souls 1 came out, people theorised that um, Soler himself was that long-lost war god because he is a mighty warrior um, and he is devoted to the sun and he is searching for his own son and wishes to regain some kind of favour, some kind of divine favour, perhaps. So, you know, if the god of uh, war was turned into a mortal human, that might be very much the kind of person he is. Um, but it is revealed in Dark Souls 3 that, no, the... Um, Gwyn's eldest son is still, like, deity 
level of an entity and he possibly the sin he committed was connected in some way to dragons because there is a character in Dark Souls 3 who is the Nameless King. Um, in order to answer that question, I need you to tell me what you mean by the whole Gwendolyn thing, because you could be referring to like three different things easily. Um, amazing chest ahead, imminent stomach. Interesting. Interesting. That's a different take on the horny messages left outside this door, because there are always a ton of horny messages left outside this door for reasons that will become momentarily obvious. Also, hi, Bina. Imminent stomach. Interesting. Wait, hang on. Is this a Vor reference? I bet this is a Vor reference. So... You know, try holding with both hands. Gorgeous view ahead. Amazing chest ahead. Very common messages out here, but she is a giantess. You know, so... Okay, the question of whether or not Gwendolyn is male is one of intense discussion and also queer theory. I'll get to that some other time. In fact, last ep last stream, I think I said I wasn't going to comment on it, but since you've asked specifically, I'll talk about that later. Oh, chosen undead, I am Guinevere, daughter of Lord Gwyn and Queen of Sunlight. Since the day the father is filmed in obscurity, I have awaited thee. I bequeath so now we have the warp ability to get between bonfires pretty much everything she's telling us is intentionally misleading and beseech thee succeed lord Gwyn, and inherit the fire of our world thou shalt end it this eternal twilight and avert further undead sacrifices End the twilight, overt further sacrifices of the undead. These seem like cool things that you, a chosen one, who's fought through hell to come here to heaven and um, be told that you're going to inherit the mantle of the king of the gods, sure do seem like things you ought to be doing in that sort of situation. See, be wary of gorgeous view. You should. You should be wary of this gorgeous view. It exists to mislead you. Because as we discussed last time, this is an illusion. This is not a real person. Uh, she probably was a real person at some point. Also, note the jiggly cleavage, gently pulsating. Um, someone clearly put a lot of love into um, creating this animation and probably... I, no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Whether the real one was this tall is an interesting question. I had this whole thing about that the size of a, of, a, of a figure was related to their sort of mythic importance in a kind of way referential to the way that ancient religious art used to depict figures as larger if they were more important. It's implied that Guinevere is still alive, um, but alive is kind of a loaded question when you're talking about deities. The people who refer to her as being alive in, in item descriptions in other games may never have... They have never met her. It's all just myth and legend at this point. All we know is that someone said at some point that she left the home of the gods to go marry a different god from a different place. As far as we know, there aren't any other gods. Who knows what the truth is? And of course, as I was discussing previously, there is no truth. It's all down to your interpretation. Oh, she said this already. Oh wait, no she didn't. Oops, I've been skipping stuff. So yeah, chances are the real Guinevere was not this big. Because um, I would say that uh, Gwyn and Gwendolyn are both a lot larger than an ordinary human. I would s they are what I call um, night scale. They're at the same sort of bigness as the Silver Knights, which are twice the size of an ordinary human. Um, so, I suspect, you know, this is a creation. There's two purposes for this illusion. One is to maintain the lie that um, the chosen undead will be sent off to a a attain the mantle of Gwyn and end the 
end the cursed twilight that we're all living in. Um, And as such, she should be created in a way that would be what a mortal might imagine a goddess to look like. So she's vast and voluptuous and um, huge. (laughs) Much, much, much bigger than you. Because that's what we all imagine when we imagine a goddess, right? That's not just me. Um, So in addition to all of that, there is also the aspect that um, Gwendolyn's really lonely, just really, really lonely, and therefore, I believe, would have created their sister in more or less the same form that their sister held in life, perhaps just larger. So I think it's a reasonable assumption that the original Guinevere did, in fact, (laughs) look like that, but maybe not so big. After all, it would be weird that, um, it would be weird that, uh, that giant goddess is in that room, um, which has no doors to her size. And also, it would be weird that the statue of her outside her room is smaller than her, rather than larger. I'm not going to say, well, wouldn't you, but... What I'm saying is, I think that Gwendolyn made Guinevere's illusion look more or less like she did in life, but just much bigger. Like, I wasn't saying anything other than that. Can I get that guy with a soul spear from here? Does not look like it. I can probably drop on him though. Dynamic entry. Yes, we we never see Gwyn's uh, we never see um, Gwyn's wife. We never know where his children came from. I think she might be alluded to at one point by one thing somewhere, but I don't recall. Um, the theory that is that the statue you see in Firelink Shrine, not in Firelink Shrine, in the Undead Parish, is a depiction of Gwyn's wife holding baby Gwendolyn. This is a pretty reasonable assumption because the Dark Moon Seance Ring that you find in the Catacombs, which is the way you get um, into the secret boss arena, the less destructive way of getting to the secret boss arena with Gwendolyn himself, is... Um, did I echo that guy? I believe I did. One soul space should just obliterate it. Get wrecked. But yeah, so there is a figure um, found in that tomb and in that church who is a female figure holding a baby. So it's not an unreasonable assumption that that is the Divine Mother. Uh, And that the baby is Gwendolyn, last and youngest of the deities of Anne Orlando. I mean, you're not wrong, but also the kind of like separation between the mythic divinity and the myths and legends told about these people and their actual real historical personages is interesting um and what is is not true due to that is also interesting i've got the lightning knife which i think is is all good for now cometh soon but yeah um so it's kind of up to us where we go now. Well, yeah, but Guinevere is said to have gone off and married another god by someone who barely even remembers the gods of Anor Londo in an item description, and as I've said before, we have no idea who says it or why. Um, so I believe that, like, in the eons that pass between these games, you know, the shreds of myth myth that re- remain become remixed and transformed over time, you know, much as mythology in real life has, because, you know, the things that a historical personage 3,000 years ago was saying about their gods are not necessarily the same things people might... The, the, not necessarily the same as the things those same peoples might have been saying a 1,000 years earlier.
Ah, well, Immersion, the answer to that is to simply get good. Which I know is... I say that ironically because I think that people saying get good to people who aren't able to play these games is unfair. <laughs> to an extreme degree, but I do... Uh, I do think that they're worth persevering with to the point where you can figure out how to play them good. So, um, at this point, there's a couple of things we can do. The main thing, the main critical path objective at this point is to return to Firelink Shrine and give the Lord Vessel to um, the Primordial Serpent, who was the guy who requested that we come up here and get it in the first place. Either right now or when you do that, four additional locations will become unlocked, uh, which lead to the next four bosses that we have to beat to beat the game. One of them is up here, and ah, there we go. As you can see, that barrier is still up, so we can't take care of it yet, but I would like to come back and take care of it first. Um, simply because it's really convenient to go deal with that problem. So we're not going to do that right now. I will save time by homeward boning. Back to a bonfire and then teleporting via bonfire. But I do recommend, if you can get into Dark Souls, try it. Uh, and if you have the game already, you know, give it another go. Bear in mind that patience and being careful are, are like the most important things to, to getting into the game. Uh, shall, I, shall I put some points in faith point uh, unnecessarily? It's such a pain in the ass, but it'll make my life a lot easier. Two, three, no, I don't have enough. I'd have to get up to 14, which would be six points expended, which is insane. I'm not doing that. I mean, you say that, but between turning 30 and turning 31, I became better at video games than I did between turning 20 and turning 30. So, <laughs> uh, getting older doesn't necessarily make you uh, worse at, at the video games. Uh, where am I going to put my points? Oh, I want more. Do I want more attunement slots at this point? I've got five. I'll probably want to cap out my attunement slots at six because it gets debilitatingly expensive later on. So I think I'll put the next couple in Endurance to build my stamina up a tiny bit. And then we'll head back to Firelink Shrine, which we can teleport to but not from until we reignite the fire. This load's taking a while. There we go. Well, well, who's this? Looks like a familiar face. Well, fancy meeting you here. You did much for me up above. I am grateful. You know, I was thinking the gate, the old fortress. Is that your doing? Rude for him to ask me a question when I was in the middle of taking a drink. Yes, I knew it. It seemed like an unlikely coincidence. Well, am I fortunate? of Katarina thanks you sincerely. Please, take this as a token of my gratitude. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Guy. I'm that's, I'm sure that'll come in very, very handy. What, what a nice present that you definitely thought about me and the kind of magics that I use before giving me. Um, that's fair, by the way. Uh, it's completely reasonable to not have the time or the energy to play Vijima games at that sort of time in your life. Uh, the only reason I can still play as many video games as I do is because I'm irrevocably insane. There you are. I'll be heading down below shortly. There's nothing worthwhile up above. No worries. Venturing is my life. I'm prepared for the worst. <laughs> So I mentioned this last time, but when he said he's going downwards, I assumed to that to mean that he would head to New Londo, which is one of the places we'll be going soon. That's not actually the case. Um, he's heading down to Blight Town and the Swamp. Oh, you thought you could get away that easy? No, nobody, nobody makes it out that easy. Congratulations. Welcome back to the world of Suck. Thank you. Anastasia, of Astora. Now I can continue my duty as a keeper. But I only hope that my impure tongue 
not a pen. So she had her tongue cut out as some kind of ex punishment for some kind of existential crime, and she's actually upset that you have restored her tongue to her by bringing her back to life. Forgive me. I have been pure. My tongue was never intended for restoration. Please, if you have any heart, leave me be. So yeah, one of these, one of the many enigmatic NPCs with a few voice lines that sort of tell you a lot and nothing all at the same time and make you think a lot of thoughts about stuff. She's also a huge mood, you know. Not to, not to belittle her Per's position or anything, but like, uh, we've all had days like that. Existential crime is just a fun, evocative phrase to say, I'm afraid. That's my deal. Is this guy back? Yeah, he is. <gasps> I forgot to leave a message outside the doors. Oops, oh well. Uh, oh, you again? Me? Uh, I've become separated from my lady. Have you? I've scoured near and far, but no sight of her. Where could she have gone? My lady, to think I swore to protect you with my life. To continue the theme of people just fucking lying to you through their teeth, this dude is absolutely one of them. Your Highness, where have you gone? I am entirely to blame for this. Oh, woe is me. I am unworthy. Deathly so. Um, I'll expand on what I mean if I remember in a minute, but before then, we need to go and talk to the worst NPC in the game again. Hooray! <clears throat> So when we talk to him, he'll unlock the next four areas that we can explore. Heavens, you have done it. You have retrieved the Lord Vessel. After a thousand years, it is you. It is really you. <laughs> to you too, buddy. Do you clear your throat at me, sir? Just take that vessel on a journey. I assume that you are ready. Now, be still. Assume the position. Daddy wishes a snack. This is the worst thing that happens to you in this entire game. Also, as bad as this seems, it's implied these guys have two heads. They are double-headed serpents. That is not the same head you came out of. Uh, you, you did not come out of the same head you went in. Oh, he sucks so bad. I hate him. So, at this point, if you're suspicious of him and his whole objective for you... Uh, you can actually escape this place. You can use a Homeward Bone to teleport back out to Firelink Shrine. And this will unlock some interesting things later on that I will talk about at the place they would happen if we were going to do that. However, instead, we're going to continue progressing through this game as we would if we were playing it for the first time. I think it's probably like petting greasy human flesh. Like, you know if you haven't showered in four days? You know, because you've got the mental sickness. Unhealthy new also I will buy. So, we now have four avenues for progression. What does that mean? Very well. As King Seeker, I shall now instruct you, the Lord's successor, in your next task. 
To achieve your fate, fill the vessel with powerful souls, commensurate to the great soul of wind. Scarce few possess such brilliant souls. I bet you do. Can I kill you? Lord Nito, the witch of Isolith, the four kings of New Londo, who inherited the shards of Gwyn's soul, and Lord Gwyn's former confidant, Seath, the Scaleless. All of their souls are required to satiate the Lord Vessel. Are you ready? Then we shall return. Stay still for a moment. Wait, you're not gonna do it again, are you? No, 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 no. Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> I hate how long his neck is as well. Like, he's a snake, but his, his head's at right angles. It's really fucked up. I think it might have been inspired by, uh, like, medieval illuminated manuscript marginalia. There's definitely some creatures in those that look a bit like this. It's actually no longer the only way to travel between these two places, but the reason why it's the only way to travel there at first is because he lives in this hole, I guess. And, um, you'll die if you drop down from here. That's not actually true, though. You get saved by magic if you drop down by yourself. <laughs> so I guess he didn't need to fucking do that at all, did he? Like, not to be like, hey, wait a minute, but hey, wait a minute. But we can teleport now, so it's fine. We don't have to do that ever again. So, there's a few different places we can go now, as I said before. We can head to uh, the Catacombs and the Grave of Giants to fight Lord of the Dead, Nito. We can head to the Demon Ruins to get to Isolith to go fight uh, the Bed of Chaos from which all demons sprang. Or we can go to the Royal Archives in Anor Londo to fight Seath the Scaleless, the dragon who betrayed all the other dragons. Or we can go to New Londo and fight the Four Kings who um, chill in the dark and about whom I have some things to say. And near whom I will be able to talk about the other ending of the game. Oh, you want me to go fight Havel? Okay, I'm gonna go fight Havel. What's the shortest route to get to Havel? I think if I go to the Undead Parish, probably. Otherwise it's up and then down and then around. Probably there. But we can have a look anyway. That's a pun for those of you keeping track. I probably won't even use his um, his ring if I get it, which reminds me, actually, we got a cool ring that I want to put on. So, um, the Ring of Favour and Protection was dropped by uh, Loren- uh, not Loren, just Lautrec. Ring symbolising favour and protection of the goddess Fina, known in legend to possess fateful beauty. This ring boosts wearer's HP, stamina, and max equipment load, but breaks if ever removed. Oh shit, that guy's still here? Welp. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> so, um, at this point I usually put this on and just leave it on for the rest of the game because it's a big boost to your hit points, to your stamina regen, and to your equipment load. Um, and it's just really convenient to have all those abilities on one nice thing and then I just never take it off. Uh, unless a lot later on I want to equip things like uh, the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring and something else at the same time. See, this guy um, doesn't respawn, so I'm actually going to go restore my spell casts, and then we can go fight Havel. I'll probably chain backstabs to fight Havel because I'm a coward and he's terrifying, but uh, if I can hit him with some soul arrows, that'll be effective. Also, he has really high magic resistance because of his uh, armor set, which is one of the heaviest in the game. Is that enough for- no, that's not enough for another level up. So, uh, yeah, off the avenues we can explore. Off those bosses, um, the Bed of Chaos is really easy because it's a puzzle boss. So if you know what to do, you can just um, do the right things in the right order and beat him very easily. The That's in the uh, the Demon Ruins. 
Alternatively, we can head to the Archives and fight Seath, which is normally really difficult for the spellcasters because he's a sorcerer, and may in fact be the origin of the Dragon School of Sorcery. Um, as such, um, magic resistance, there's lots of it around. Turns out if you're a wizard, you're good at resisting magic, who knew? Um, then there's also, uh, but, 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 because we have specialised in our lightning dagger, we can, um, kill him relatively easily, we can also kill his, uh, his guards relatively easily. Alternatively, we could go to the catacombs, which is a pain in the ass because the skeletons keep respawning unless you have a divine weapon or you kill the necromancers. Uh, at, the, at our current power level, we can probably get through and kill the uh, necromancers relatively easily, which means it won't be much of a problem. But it can be a bit time-consuming and irritating. Uh, and in, in addition, the following area, the Tomb of Giants, is pitch black, and you need either to equip an offhand lantern, which you can obtain in the catacombs, uh, and we'll sacrifice using the shield, which I kind of rely on at the moment, or you can... Um, head to the demon ruins first and pick up a unique item that is a headgear that sheds light so we'll probably do that in that order but um as for the other two the uh duke's archives and new londo uh we could tackle either of those now or later it's not really much of an issue either way and he's gonna ambush me as you can see fortunately i now have enough hit points that he doesn't insta kill me with that Although, you know, the knight is young. Oh wow, I really am starting to do some massive damage output. I really need another soul spear. I think you can get a second casting of it somewhere. Some <laughs> somehow. Um, you can pick up extra castings on subsequent new game classes. Ah, he's not resistant to lightning. That's good to know. But also, um, his resistance is often based on his shield. This is one of the easiest Havel fights I've had. Uh, I feel like I'm bullying him, actually, after we spent all this time building him up as a threat. <laughs> he just gets poddied. So, uh, that's all done with. There is one other avenue for exploration we could go. We could explore Dark Root Garden. So if we use the seal that we can buy from Andre, or we explore over in that way direction and fight a big Hydra, we can go fight through a big zone. If you do that and kill its boss, the Great White Wolf Sif, then in the DLC... I've got that backwards. If you do the DLC first and then go fight Sif, Sif rec recognises you because you will have met hundreds of years in the past. Alright, have a nice lowdown. Oh yeah, you can get um, cast light from the DLC area as well, which is nice. But, let's see. I think I want to fuck up a dragon. I think that's what I want to spend my time doing. So, well actually, does anyone have any preferences? What zone should we do? Actually, we could go back. Actually, no, I think we should clear up a secondary zone first, now that I think about it. Please do let me know if you have a preference about which uh, avenue for exploration we should go to next, but while we're deciding we're going to go to a mini area, the secret area, which is the Undead Asylum Revisited. Are you still here? There you are. I'll be heading down. There's nothing. No <laughs> it doesn't have anything else to say. I guess... I'm not sure when he moves on. Normally it's when you reload an area that NPCs will move on to their next thing, but apparently not in this instance. Hey Jules! Welcome to the stream. Have a soul, they're on me. Careful about the dark, though. So this is the way to get to the secret, secret bonus area with a secret bonus oh, boss. Which is also the only way to get to the DLC. Um, if you come to this secret area, maybe we should do the DLC zone. That's yet another avenue for progress. <coughs> Excuse me. So did I get the key off this roof already? I believe I did, and now I've fallen down like some kind of fool. Can I get back? Yeah, we're fine. So, uh, yeah, so that means we've got the four next main bosses available. 
Um, Seath the Dragon, the Lord of the Undead, the um, Four Kings of the Darkness, and some other guy that I've already talked about that I can't remember the name of right now. So if you pretend to be an egg for long enough, um, ravens will come and relocate you. This is this is a known fact about uh, the natural world. But yeah, so coming back here unlocks also the first DLC zone, which um, is another avenue we could go. And then there's the dark route, so that's actually six locations that we could explore next. The game really opens up at this point. Although of course you can do this deal, uh, you can get the DLC access here at any point, and if you have it unlocked any time. After visiting Anor Londo, you can go do the first DLC. I think that's not exactly true, because NFTs, as a fundamental component of their existence, require the wastage of a vast amount of the electricity. There's fundamentally nothing wrong with, um, like, art adoption. Like, it's, it's not really any different to selling the rights to it. Like... If you sell the rights to something, then they then it's theirs to do with as they will, and you you abdicate your your copyright of it. So it's more like selling the rights to an individual rather than a company that wants to make a TV show or whatever than it is to an NFT. If you ask me, so revisiting the Undead Asylum, as you can see, the lunatics are now running it. Well, I mean, the concept of owning a piece of art already existed, I'm afraid. Lightning. Dagger. Well, digital art is the only thing that that's really true for, because uh, physical art is I inherently irreproducible. Even two very similar copies made by the same artist using the same materials will be slightly different simply because of physics. So coming back to the Undead Asylum, it's basically the same except that there's a new boss which we'll fight shortly and there are a couple silver knights around who we will shamelessly explode with our incredibly powerful magics. Well, that's less powerful. Actually, these might be black knights. If you look at their necks and heads, you can tell these guys are black knights because they've got those their, their bunny ears on the top of their helmets point upwards rather than sort of out and around to the sides like little wings. Um, and they have spikes on their collars because they're cool. As anyone with a spiked m collar will know. The, uh, the other addition is that, as was mentioned in the tutorial, Oscar here has gone hollow. As he said, I do not want to harm you after death. Well, unfortunately, we've come back and now he's gonna. He actually wields the um, Dragon Crest Shield, or just the Crest Shield, which is a highly magic resistant shield. His attacks are very fast, I need to be careful here. Pa pow! Another back alley shanking as they go. So there's the Crest Shield which has really, really high magic resistance and will therefore be very useful when we go fight Seath. These are all tutorial messages, so they're not really interesting. It's interesting that this trap has been reset. Like, who bothered to do that? Ouchie. So this leads up to... Wait, no, I remember where it goes. We want to go this way. This leads up to where we drop down to fight the tutorial boss. However, this time, we have the Undead Asylum F2 key, which will let us get through here. These guys can still kill you at this stage of the game if you're careless. If they go into their flailing uh, combo attack, they can just uh, rip you to shreds. So you do have to be a little bit careful, but for the most part, you can just not bother to try, you know? Is that his one job? Is he the only person in this place who isn't hollow? <laughs> he remembers his his mono fixation. The thing that keeps him sane is that he puts the boulder back up. Oh my god, he's Sisyphus. The endless Sisyphean endeavor of rolling a boulder up a hill for whenever a chosen undead happens to bust out of this place. 
He's not hollow, he just dresses this way. I mean, it's possible that um, some of these people were guards to the asylum, and some of them were inmates. But uh, it's implied that every different sort of realm in the world deals with the issue of the curse of undeath, which, by the way, itself is an existential symptom of the sickness of the universe. Um, the universe was supposed to grow old and die naturally, and has been pro prolonged beyond its natural lifespan, as I have said many times. Um, and as such, this curse has come into existence, all because Gwyn couldn't let things end gracefully. So the undead are, cor are corralled and sent to the north, but it's only one place that does that, or some places. Um, it's implied that... Oh, that's right, I was going to talk about uh, the priest in Firelink Shrine and why he's a liar. So it is implied, ultimately, that um, the way that members of the Way of White who turn undead are dealt with is that they are sent here to Firelink Shrine as part of this quest to recover the lost right of kindling. But they're not intended to return. They're never actually supposed to succeed on that quest. And it is his job to make sure that they don't come back. So the undead are sent off into the catacombs and told, you know, it's your divine duty to rescue this important artifact and bring it back. Um, but instead of doing that, they get stuck on how difficult it is and they go hollow, which, as we've discussed before, is despair, you know? You don't really go hollow and... Hollowing happens slowly over time, but I've just realised. Huh. This boss is tricksy. Did we get the right spell? Do we have it? Attune. Slot. Fall control. Fantastic. So this boss fight starts with you dropping from a great height, and unusually, uh, normally when you drop from a great height into a boss arena in a Souls game, um, you aren't harmed by the fall. Um, but this time you are. You get staggered and you take a bunch of damage. So instead of that, if we cast full control first, we can safely drop down. And then start blasting. So this guy's tough because he's in a really tiny um, area. In fact, I'm going to be quiet to focus, if you don't mind. And that's the end of him. Oh, you might be right. Um, I wonder if there are any other boss arenas that you... No, you fall into the Four Kings boss arena without taking damage, but that's because you're falling into a formless void where there's no... Uh, there's no, no floor to take damage from, so I suppose that makes sense, actually, that you would take no damage there and you would take damage elsewhere. So the reason why he's so tough is because he's big in a small room, which is always difficult, and his attacks have a huge AoE and do a ton of damage, and also those uh, explosions that he does um, also do a ton of damage. And, you know, occupy most of the room. But there's a neat little detail, which is that those explosions, actually, they don't form under him, they form slightly in front of him. Which means that if you can get behind him, you can get uh, 
you can dodge it much more easily. So the other item we picked up here, there's two items that we, we got. One is the um, one is the rusty iron ring, which is uh, the ring that gives us the ability to not stagger in water. Yeah, uh, falling damage does seem to be less of an issue. So that's this whole zone. That's uh, this place revisited. Which means we can head back now. So, uh, yeah, demon ruins or... De Actually, let's do the DLC zone first. Um, since that's a sort of a self-contained thing. Where the hell is... Where the hell am I going? Oh, I know. Let's go to Firelink Shrine and buy spells. So if we head off to the DLC zone... Um, I think that when we get there, I will call that it for today because uh, my voice is getting really sore because I accidentally recorded some test footage for a new Let's Play, which, um, and don't worry, I will be resuming the uh, Dishonored Let's Play, not not abandoning it, but uh, I, I, I accidentally went for an hour rather than the uh, half hour I was intending. I thought that perhaps you'd gone hollow on me. So have you come to further your study of sorcery? What's he got that we want? Um, probably homing soul mass is the use most useful thing to grab at this moment. Uh, great heavy soul arrow is good to have as well. Let's just why not just get everything and see what happens actually? Because if we buy everything from him, he will relocate. I too will leave soon. Undead or no, I shan't stay here forever. You have great potential. Don't go and die over nothing. So yeah, once you buy all of his spells, he relocates to the Duke's Archives, which is where we'll find him later. Do I have enough spells to buy the Bellowing Dragon Crest? I might. I don't want to use Smell's uh, soul, so let's just pop it and see what we get. 12,000. I think I need another... Uh, 2,000. Oh, hello. Appreciate your attempt. That will. Okay, I'm just going to skip that. Have you ever no, 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 no. Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, that is an interesting thing. I, f I always forget that you can talk to NPCs and. Have you ever cast one of Logan's spells? Isn't it exhilarating? As he sees it, there are no gods, no transcendence, only truth. And Logan only wishes to elucidate it. It is this heretical methodology that allowed Logan to advance sorcery to the point that he has. In a word, he is a hero. Congratulations, you're the MVP of tonight, Bina. Time will tell. The annals of history will prove dispassionate. So yeah, um, Big Hat Logan, he's good at magic, who knew? So, uh, Griggs here has a few other spells that he can sell us, that, but they're just copies of the same ones, so I don't need them. What I really want is this, the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring. Lingering Dragon Crest Ring is useful if you're using, uh... Things like magic weapon for the buffs, but we aren't ever going to use that, so we won't need it. Right. That'll do it. That's oh, hello. Thank you. Welcome, and we thanks you. for the follow, assuming you're a real person who is following me and not a bot. So, hi. Welcome to the Dark Souls. Um, or I guess, welcome to the me. Since I do stream other things sometimes. So, uh, the first DLC, as I said when we walked past it, is hidden inside the giant painting in Anor Londo. So what I'm going to do is warp back over to Anor Londo. It's probably easiest to go from the Anor Londo bonfire. And then we'll run over there, get inside the painting. And, you know, it's, it's a normal thing to do. Um, in fact, after I finish playing, I think I might go climb inside a painting myself. It's very relaxing. And then... Next session, we'll work our way through that DLC hack. You can tell that my voice is getting tired because my accent is going really weird and I am slurring and mispronouncing words. So what we need to do is go to the uh, central tower and then go down. I think just one step? I think it's already in the right position, so it should be alright to get to the ground floor of this cathedral on the left. And then I can go and rest my voice. In fact, I might get some ice cream because oof. I don't know how I used to stream for four hours sometimes. It's insane. 
I, I, I always forget just how much it takes out to just talk constantly for hours. So remember, treat your streamers with kindness and respect because they are causing themselves unnecessary harm. That's not true. Uh, but yeah, so. I'm ow. Anyway, so we're back here. It's funny to me that the, uh, the DLCs in this game are hidden so carefully behind such arcane mechanisms to unlock them. It's so easy to miss um, the uh, ability to go back to the Undead Asylum. Which means it's very easy to miss the ability to get into the DLC zone. Similarly, for the second DLC, you need to visit a certain area at a certain time uh, and then visit another area at a different time, I believe. And um, then you can access the DLC zone after you wake up an NPC. I forget the exact order of events, but basically it's very much like the um, quest lines in the game itself, where it kind of comes down to um, these weird details of like... You know, if you if you have a if you never have a reason to go back down to the giant swamp, then you would never see the ending of um, Siegmeier's storyline. Which, fair enough, for storylines that are just in the base game, but it's a bit weird, and it's a DLC because it's kind of like, well, you, you paid to have this experience, and instead of having this experience, you play through the entire game and never find it. But it is also very on brand for Dark Souls to do it that way. By the way, Lisa, I did see your DM, but um, I cannot see it easily in my stream manager because it's maybe badly designed. <laughs> um, I wonder if I should re-equip a, a large soul arrow. I do seem to be blasting people from outside of their aggro radii. I should have just been doing this all along. That's a lot more efficient. I don't know why I bothered spending all of this time learning spells. It's clearly the correct solution. It's been this dinner knife the whole time. Do a nice little matrix dodge around that knife. Right, time to dive into a painting. I love the wiggly legs. There's a lot of slightly awkward, strange animations in this game, but the animations of people's legs struggling as they try not to be devoured by a box or sucked into a painting are weirdly realistic. So it's entirely possible to have grabbed the item from uh, the, the revisited zone and come straight into this painting the first time you come through Anor Londo, but if you do that, you're stuck here. The only way to get out is to complete the DLC and get out the other side, unless you have the Lord Vessel and can warp from bonfires, because we do have that, we can actually just leave if we want to. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess I was wrong about that. Uh, it might be when you complete the DLC zone it unlocks for you to warp. Guess we're committed to this path now. Anyway, uh, that's going to be all from me for today before my voice gives out entirely. Thank you so much for watching. Please recommend me to people, I'd love to grow my channel more, and if I do get to... Uh, 100 view, 100 followers, I will be doing a marathon stream of playing through all of Mirror's Edge in one sitting, and yeah, check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much to my patrons, etc. Catch you again later, catch me again later, uh, I stream currently every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 7pm UK time. Thank you so much, and goodbye.